first I want to thank my mom and my dad, my family, my sisters, my brothers, my kids, my friends, my family in the United States. I want to thank the Omahen and the Edena Traditional Council, the Royal Family of Itre, the Itre community, Itre Hen, um, for this wonderful day, for believing in me, for trusting me, for giving me opportunities to prove myself. Um, this is only the first day of weeks, months, and years of prosperity, thanksgiving, and blessings to everyone. Hey, what's good, everybody? Thank you for checking me out. This is Echo Simpson. If this is your first time of checking out my YouTube channel, you know what to do, right? Click on the subscription button so that we can grow this channel together. I know you've seen the exodus happening. Yes, brothers and sisters are moving uh, from the USA, from the UK, from Canada, from the Caribbean. Yeah, I have personally, you know, helped few people move to the motherland, you know, picking them at the airport, showing them, you know, what they have to do, you know, getting accommodation. Sometimes, like I said, it's not easy doing this because I know you're moving from one, you know, continent or one country to the other. Look at the, the culture. Look at the tradition, look at the lifestyle. That is where sometimes we all get a little bit frustrated. But aside that, I know the movement is happening. Um, I've seen a lot of African Americans, Africans in diaspora coming to the motherland, you know, getting, you know, jobs, getting positions in certain companies. But aside that, uh, we have other brothers and sisters getting a traditional position. If I say a traditional position, then I'm looking at, you know, something from the palace, something from the kingmakers, something from the chiefs, and something from the queen mothers. So today I'm going to give you something that happened a few weeks ago with my brother Rashad. Rashad is, a, is an African-American. Uh, he moved to Ghana during the pandemic, COVID season, and he's never gone back. But he's doing something beautiful, which is, you know, after the COVID in between, I mean, he was bringing a lot of visitors, a lot of tourists, a lot of you to the motherland, especially Ghana, to tour and experience the beautiful nature, the beautiful lifestyle and the culture of the people of Ghana. A few weeks ago, like I said, he was given a traditional position. I'm using the word traditional because we are not looking at the corporate world. We are not looking at politics. We are looking at our culture, the traditional culture. So in Ghana, let me give you some tips about, you know, Ghana chiefs or the Ghanaian kingmakers when it comes to selecting who is to be crowned a chief. So basically, we believe that certain people founded certain communities. In my previous video, one of the chiefs said, we believe that some of us migrated from Egypt, you know, then Egypt and now in Ghana. So during that period, certain people founded certain communities, settled there and started making a family and grew up to what they are right now. In relation to that, those people who founded that area are called the royal family. So as and when the community grows, definitely there must be one person who is supposed to be in charge of the community. So we may call them chiefs. So like I said, the first people or the first settlers of that community, that area that founded the community do become the royal families, if I am right. Anybody who is watching and you think you have an addition to what I'm saying, kindly put it up as a comment. And by the way, I don't know how, do you have chiefs in your community? Do you have chiefs in your country? What are the names that are given to those people who are selected from a royal family to become the overseers of that community or that area? So um, those people who are the first settlers of that area or that community become the royal family and so therefore whoever becomes a chief must come from the royal family yes so you realize that in our country especially the southern part of ghana which is the akan people we have a chief we have um, the queen mother and then we have other king makers so what happens is that when there is time for a chief to be selected or to be installed, it is the queen mother that does the selection. And she doesn't do that by herself. I mean, she calls the other elders. In Ghana, we have clans. So we have seven clans basically in the southern part of Ghana, which is the Akan people. So all the clans may come together and say, okay, it is time for this person 
to be the king or to be the chief. So then that person is selected. But it is, when it comes public, it is the duty of the queen mother to, you know, unveil the candidate by the help of the other king makers. So basically that is how kings are selected here in Ghana, especially the Akan people. Now aside that, other people that are not from the royal family are also given certain positions in the chieftaincy kingdom. Yes, in the Akan setting that I'm talking about, if they realize that this person or that person is performing tremendously in the community, being a development, being it giving ideas to the chiefs or giving ideas to the people that is helping develop the people or develop the community, such a person is usually crowned as a chief, but not crowned as a king or as the paramount chief. It doesn't work that way. But you may be given a chieftaincy title within the traditional area or within the traditional council. And that is how come my brother Rashad and the chieftaincy title of Nsrashe of Itri community. So Nsrashe in English will be chief of tourism or tourism. So Rashad Makori from the United States who moved to Ghana two years ago because of his participation in the development of Itri, a community in Elmina, uh, the chief and his elders and the queen mother and the king makers realized that, hey, Rashad is doing beautiful, bringing a lot of people from the diaspora to the motherland. And when they come, they participate in community labor, they participate in community development. So there was the need for my brother Rashad Makori and stood as the chief of tourism. So this is what basically happened at the ceremony where they installed Rashad Makori as Ensra Shahin of Itri. So if you're lucky to have the chief himself bless you on this special day of you being installed, then hey, you're lucky to be part of the beautiful family of the royal family in Itri. Put it up as a comment and let me know how are things done in your community, whether in Ghana, in Ivory Coast, in Togo, Nigeria, wherever you are, put it up as a comment and let's take it from there. First, I want to thank my mom and my dad, my family, my sisters, my brothers, my kids, my friends, my family in the United States. I want to thank the Omahen and the Edena Traditional Council, the royal family of Itre, the Itre community, Itre Hen, um, for this wonderful day, for believing in me, for trusting me, for giving me opportunities to prove myself. Um, this is only the first day of weeks, months, and years of prosperity, thanksgiving, and blessings to everyone. I call Simpson, connecting Africans in the diaspora to the motherland.